The world has changed since my last human spaceflight news rundown. Russia's unprovoked invasion of Ukraine, which is displacing more than a million people and killing thousands, is beginning to road away decades-long post-Cold War partnerships in space that were forged with the goal of fostering peace and cooperation among former adversaries. What was once thought impossible less than two weeks ago, the breakup of the U.S.-Russia International Space Station partnership, is slowly becoming more and more likely with each passing day. So in this video, I plan to go over what's going on regarding this partnership and how it could affect near-term decision-making for the outpost. And while all this is going on, NASA continues to make progress on the first space launch system rocket, which is set to roll out to the launch pad for the first time later this month. Since Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24, 2022, the United States, Europe, and many of their allies have imposed wide-sweeping sanctions on the country. It wasn't long before the Director General of the Russian State Space Corporation, Roscosmos, began tweeting threats about leaving the International Space Station and going on Russian state TV to talk about how the U.S. side of the station is solely dependent on the Russian side. I won't dive back into the details of how that is mostly wrong. I already did a video over that, which you can see right here. But the threats have only gotten louder with the recent release of a one minute long video joking about the detachment of the space station and letting it fall back into Earth's atmosphere. At the same time, however, other space partnerships are already being suspended indefinitely. Russia has suspended Soyuz launch operations at Europe's South American launch site, and OneWeb and Arian Space have suspended all launches on Soyuz rockets in general. Additionally, the European Space Agency now believes a joint robotic Mars mission with Russia is unlikely to launch this year, which would postpone that flight to at least 2024. So far, the most that has impacted the ISS is the cessation of science activities between Germany and Russia on the Russian side of the space station. Day-to-day -day activities are generally going along as planned. Later this month, an all-Russian crew is set to launch from Kazakhstan and Soyuz MS-21 to replace the outgoing crew of Soyuz MS-19, which includes two Russian cosmonauts and one NASA astronaut. The NASA astronaut, Mark Vandehei, is still expected to land in Kazakhstan on March 30th after being in orbit for nearly a year. He'll be recovered by Russian forces. Upon landing, normally there are NASA personnel present. Vandehei and his team is expected to be flown to the nearby city of Karaganda in Kazakhstan. From there, a private NASA jet would fly him back to the States. Assuming that goes well, the only other near-term thing to worry about is the Antares rocket, which is used to send the Cygnus cargo ship into orbit. Northrop Grumman says it has enough parts for two more launches, but because the rocket's first stage is built in Ukraine and its engines are sourced from Russia, which is no longer selling engines to the US, it's unclear what the vehicle's future is. Cygnus can launch on other rockets, but the only one with availability and capacity would likely be SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket or United Launch Alliance's upcoming Vulcan rocket. Depending on how things go in the next few months, we really don't know what the relationship between Russia and the rest of the ISS partners will look like. Will Russia end its partnership at the end of 2024 as it currently plans, or will they continue to 2030 like the rest of the ISS partners want to do? And if Russia decides to leave, what does that mean for the rest of the station? The two biggest features the U.S. side needs to acquire is independence and attitude control and reboosting capabilities, both of which are probably solvable problems in one to two years if industry is called upon to find solutions. Former NASA Space Shuttle Program Manager Wayne Hale has already suggested a Tiger Team be formed to create contingency plans in case the situation gets worse. What those plans might look like is a video of its own, so if you want me to do one about that in the future, leave a like and comment down below. However, it's in the best interest of all partners to continue the ISS. As NASA's Chief of Human Spaceflight Operations, Kathy Leaders, said in a conference call last week, The ISS is an international partnership that was created as an international partnership with joint dependencies. It's a place where we live and operate in space in a peaceful manner. That's really a model for us to be operating in the future. And I actually feel like this is a good message for us that that we are operating peacefully in space now. It would be a sad day for international operations if we can't continue to peacefully operate in space. And as a team, we are doing that. In commercial crew program news, NASA recently awarded three additional crew rotation missions to SpaceX using its Crew Dragon spacecraft. SpaceX and Boeing were initially contracted for six crew rotation missions each. Because Boeing's Starliner has yet to launch a successful mission, all commercial crew rotation missions have so far been done on Crew Dragon. By the end of this year, SpaceX will have reached the fifth operational crew mission for NASA, 
so additional flights have been ordered at a firm fixed price of $776 million. This brings the total value of SpaceX's commercial crew contracts since 2014 to $3.5 billion. NASA said because of the technical delays experienced by Boeing and its Starliner spacecraft, that vehicle isn't expected to fly an operational crew rotation mission until at least the second half of 2023. For now, SpaceX is gearing up to launch the Crew-4 mission to the ISS as early as mid-April 2022. Moving on from ISS news to Artemis program news, NASA finally announced the date for the rollout of the Artemis 1 Space Launch System rocket. The mega rocket is scheduled to leave the Vehicle Assembly Building at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida on March 17th. Using a crawler transporter, the SLS rocket, Orion spacecraft, and mobile launcher will slowly be rolled to Launch Complex 39B, located nearly 7 kilometers away. The trek is expected to take about 12 hours. From there, NASA said engineers will begin connecting the rocket and mobile launcher to all the pad systems in order to verify everything is working as designed. This is expected to culminate with a wet dress rehearsal propellant loading test at least two weeks after reaching the pad. After these tests are completed, the stack will then be rolled back to the vehicle assembly building to be prepared for its actual launch, now likely no earlier than June. In the meantime, during a recent House Science Committee hearing on the Artemis program, NASA's Inspector General Paul Martin gave his estimates of the operational costs of an Artemis mission. During the hearing, Martin said the operational costs for a single mission would be just over $4 billion. Breaking it down, that would be $2.2 billion for the SLS rocket, $1 billion for the Orion spacecraft, $300 million for the European service module, and about $568 million for ground systems. These numbers apparently do not include development costs. Overall, Martin told Congress that his office believes NASA will ultimately spend about $93 billion on Artemis between 2012 and 2025. These costs are extremely high, and Martin said he doesn't believe NASA can make a sustainable program if those numbers aren't lowered. It's a challenging development, of course, but we did see very poor contractor performance on Boeing's part. We saw that the cost plus contracts that NASA had been using to develop the combined SLS Orion system worked to the contractors rather than NASA's advantage. And then for NASA's part, we saw poor project management and contract oversight. Interestingly, however, NASA's SLS manager, John Honeycutt, pushed back against these claims. According to Alabama.com, he told the media during a briefing at Marshall Space Flight Center that the costs won't be $4 billion a shot, but he did not give what he would consider as a more accurate estimate. That's it for this news rundown. I'll continue giving updates about any changes to the ISS program partnership as Russia's war in Ukraine continues to erode partnerships in space. Be sure to watch this video right here where I talk about how past Russian military actions have affected the ISS program and what it would mean if Russia were to split off its side of the space station. Thanks again for watching and until next time, at Astra.